Hello. In this video we're going to talk a bit more about the forced damped oscillator. Specifically we're going to see the uh, correspondence between the time response uh, which you've seen is given by this expression and the frequency response or the amplitude as function of frequency uh, which is given by this other expression here. We have seen before that we can calculate uh, or we can obtain the, f the time response using a numerical approximation, for example using OD45, uh, which is built in Octave and MATLAB. For this, we need a separate file which holds the uh, equations uh, in state space form for our system. So I have this uh, file here. I made a few modifications on this file so it is easier for us to change values of the parameters. So make sure you have uh, a similar file in your uh, computer. So in the in the main file here, I'm setting these values for per, uh, for our system, and I'm calculating the time response uh, using this. ODE45 function. And for the frequency response we can use directly this uh, expression here which I am using here in line 31. So for that I calculate the frequency ratio, the static delta and the damping factor. And then I use the expression and normalize the uh, amplitude by the static delta to give me the amplification factor. I'm also using uh, or calculating in this curve the point uh, representing the exact value of the excitation frequency that I have set for the time response. So this value here for the excitation frequency. So I'm calculating the frequency ratio related to this exact value and the corresponding uh, amplification. So I'm plotting these two uh, things in one uh, figure using the subplot uh, command in MATLAB. So first I'm plotting the time response normalized by the static delta and then I'm plotting the frequency response and also on top of that I'm plotting the point representing the exact value of the excitation frequency that I'm using. So I used that interactive uh, script that we've used before and I have adapted it so we can change the excitation frequency so I can increase it by tapping A and decrease it by tapping Z on my keyboard. As I change the frequency I update the uh, current frequency ratio, the respective uh, magnification and I recalculate the time response as the excitation frequency changes. So if I go ahead and run this script as it is, we'll see these two figures uh, here on the left we have the time response which used the uh, numerical uh, approximation to calculate and this time response we see has a transient behavior here in the beginning and then it settles into a steady state response. And on the right we have the frequency response or the amplitude as function of frequency and then this point here showing uh, exactly where we are in this curve when we use the excitation frequency which generated this time response. So we see here that as we use this specific value here of the excitation frequency 2, uh, it will give us a frequency ratio here close to 0, 08, 0, 09, and this amplitude is exactly what we get here in the steady state response of our time response. So you see the red point showing exactly where we are here in the frequency response and it corresponds to the amplitude here in the time response. So if we go uh, ahead and change the frequency, we increase the frequency a bit, 
we see that the amplitude in the steady state regime uh, increased a bit and that's uh, also shown by the red point here going uh, towards the right in our curve and we can go on and change this amplitude we see that we go through the resonance regime which shows our amplitude here increasing and if we, crease, if we keep increasing the frequency we see that the uh, frequency in the time response uh, the response gets faster here so the, the frequency is increasing and then after we go through the uh, resonance phase uh, as we keep increasing the frequency the excitation frequency our amplitude starts getting down and it goes down and down and down so we see that this value that we have here corresponds exactly to the amplitude of our time response and the steady state regime we see if we go back we see this exact correspondence of the red point and the level of amplitude here in our time response so that's the important thing to understand when you look into the frequency response is that each point on this curve represents a time response and more specifically the value of amplitude that you get in the frequency response corresponds to the amplitude of the time response and steady state regime.